and we are live hello everyone this is kevin the entrepreneur welcome to a very special last minute episode of the entrepreneur show where we talk about tech pop culture and life in between i am obviously your host uh so yeah anyway uh it's it's an, i'm having an interesting night night folks so right now it's 9 30 p.m on a sunday this is not typically when we would normally do a podcast show and hello lisa however something very scary kind of just popped up on my news feed and i read it and it was one of those things where it's like oh geez we need to talk about this right away now even though these podcasts are recorded live I, I think I should mention this one just in case someone sees this video, and this is not to discourage future people from watching this video or subscribing to the podcast, which is now actually on Spotify, believe it or not. Um, so yay for us. Finally got that thing all worked out. Uh, the I big issue thing is that this is such a big issue that I'm actually going to do a another edit of it later on. I'm not going to remake the video, but after this episode is done... We are going to take it and we are going to edit it into a shorter, more compact video, especially if there's like a Q&A thing that ends up happening after the show. So that's what we're going to do. This is just too important. I want to make sure everyone um, gets a chance to see it because this is this is absolutely bonkers what's happening right, right here. You know, I've said that I've made a lot of jokes about Amazon. Um, I've called their founder and CEO Jeff Bezos Lex Luthor because... I felt he was, aside from the fact that he's bald, obviously, he seems to be trying to take over the world. He's a super powerful man. He does things that are obviously very criminal in at least nature, maybe not technically legally bad, but he so totally skirts the lines of the law every day, but he's just way too powerful to do anything about. And it's also really sad to see our um, government and politicians basically bend over backwards for this one man, which they, to my knowledge they did not do for bill gates or steve jobs or tim cook or Mar certainly not for mark zuckerberg but jeff bezos who does all these really shady things he totally gets a free pass to the point and we talked about it on the last podcast episode that they are not going with amazon for a grant with the nasa program and amazon like jeff bezos has a uh, space program called blue origin and yet as a result of not picking Blue Origin as the receiver of a grant that NASA is giving out, they're going to give Amazon a $10 billion grant anyway, just because they're Amazon, I suppose. So, hey, Ryan, how are you doing? Long time no see. Welcome back. Um, so that's, um, that's one of the reasons. But, you know, even though I kind of joke about this, when you read stories like this, it's scary, and it's really no joking matter. But here's the thing, and this is definitely important to know if you have any Amazon Echo devices in your house or a ring system or anything like that. If you have Amazon electronics in the house, this is going to be extremely important because I think this is crazy. So what exactly am I talking about, and what got me in such a stressful mind that I actually decided to do a entrepreneur show podcast on Sunday at 9.41 p.m. Well, Amazon devices are soon going to be sharing your internet with neighbors, potentially complete strangers. And no, this is not an April Fool's Day joke. And Yes, this is going to happen automatically. So if this sounds just a little bit creepy, that internet that you are paying for is going to be shared with people outside your house. And who knows what <laughs> that's going to open up in terms of security and privacy issues. And they're going to do it automatically to boot. Well, then this video, this podcast, this discussion is for you. And maybe you will understand what I mean finally when I say Amazon is too powerful. And also Jeff Bezos is Lex Luthor. So anyway, this is from Ars 
Technica. And, you know, I've been, for the most part, when I read these articles, I've been just taking bits and pieces. But this is so important. We're going to go through the whole thing. And, yeah, we will definitely get to Q&As afterwards. But I'm going to try to answer as many questions as possible in this thing. So um, here's the article from Dan Gooden. Here's what it says. If you use Alexa, Echo, or any other Amazon device, you have only 10 days, 10 days, you can count them on your fingers, to opt out of an experiment that leaves your personal privacy and security hanging in the balance. That's a very powerful statement. And this is just the first, the first sentence in this. On June 8th, the merchant, web host, and entertainment behemoth will automatically enroll the devices in Amazon Sidewalk. Now, what's Amazon Sidewalk? Let us continue and read on. The new wireless mesh service will share a small slice of your internet bandwidth with nearby neighbors who don't have connectivity and help you to their bandwidth when you don't have a connection. Hmm. That sounds just a little socialist, doesn't it? You mean to tell me if I'm aware that my neighbor has Amazon products and are paying for internet, I can technically cancel my internet service because I'll just take some of theirs? Huh. You know what's actually kind of interesting about this is that I... um. I do some remote work. I, I work remotely and our internet is secure. And for the record, we don't have Amazon products in this house. We do not have a fire TV. We do not have an echo. We do not have a ring. We do not have a dot. We do not have a fire phone. We do technically have a Kindle, but it's like a fifth generational Kindle. And I'm pretty sure that doesn't fall under what we're talking about, although I'm going to have to double check. But if I had those devices, I work from home and I deal with some pretty sensitive information over the internet. And now because Amazon wants to do like an experiment that is potentially uh, open to interpretation for the taking Huh, let's, uh, let's continue. This is getting a little creepier, and we're not even we're not even that far into this thing. By default, Amazon devices including Alexa, Echo, Ring, security cameras, outdoor lights, motion sensors, and tile trackers, which unfortunately I do have. I didn't know that was an Amazon product will enroll in the system. And since only a tiny fraction of people take the time to change default settings, that means millions of people will be co-opted into the program whether they know anything about it or not. Yeah. So, you know, this kind of reminds me of, this kind of reminds me of that thing that Facebook did years ago where they manipulated with people's emotions by tweaking with the algorithm and nobody knew that they were part of an experiment that Facebook was doing. So Facebook basically decided they were going to play an experiment that, that would affect their mental health and nobody would know. We found out years later. Now there's millions of people who have these products, who have these devices and they're going to be enrolled in a program. That's part of an experiment by Amazon. That's going to be a huge privacy risk, potentially. It's going to be security risk, potentially. Heck, if you're working remotely, it might even compromise your job. Amazon's just not going to tell you. They're just going to do it. So, yeah. Want to know how to deactivate this? Keep watching. So, um, where, where was I? The Amazon webpage linked above says Sidewalk, quote, is currently only available in the U.S., well, because it's not going to be in China. China uses We WeChat and Alibaba to spy on people. They don't need Amazon to spy on people for them. The web page also states, 
What is Amazon Sidewalk? Amazon Sidewalk is a shared network that helps devices work better. Operated by Amazon at no charge to the customers because they benefit from this. We'll tell you why. Sidewalk can help simplify new device setup, extend the low bandwidth working range of devices to help find pets or valuables with tile trackers and help devices stay online even if they are outside the range of their home Wi-Fi. In the future, Sidewalk will support a range of experiences from using Sidewalk-enabled devices such as smart security and lighting and diagnostics for appliances and tools. This is 1984. Like 1984 by George uh, Orwell. Haven't read it? Now's a good time to read it. This is what it is. How will Amazon Sidewalk impact my personal wireless bandwidth and data usage? The maximum bandwidth of the Sidewalk bridge to the Sidewalk server is 80 kbps, which is about 1 40th of the bandwidth use to stream a typical high definition video. I frankly do not care, Lex, like how much the bandwidth is. It's mine and I'm paying for it and I don't want strangers to use it. Today, when you share your bridges connection with Sidewalk, Total monthly data used by Sidewalk per account is capped at 500 megabytes, which is equivalent to streaming about 10 minutes of high definition video. Again, the amount is frankly irrelevant to me. I don't want it to be shared at all because of security concerns. Why should I participate in Amazon Sidewalk. Okay, I haven't read this yet. Let me guess. Let me guess. Uh, because Amazon's a good guy and it's for the good of the nation. And Lex Luthor is gonna bring people together. Screw Superman. Lex Luthor's gonna help help us. That's why we need to sign up for Amazon Sidewalk. Is that what it says? Amazon Sidewalk helps your devices get connected and stay connected. For example, if your Echo devices loses its Wi-Fi connection, Sidewalk can simplify reconnecting to your router. For select ring devices, you can continue to receive motion alerts from your ring security cams and customer support can still troubleshoot problems even if your device loses their Wi-Fi connection. Sidewalk can also extend the working range for your sidewalk enabled devices such as ring smart lights, pet locators, or smart locks so they can stay connected and continue to work over longer distances. Amazon does not charge any fees to join Sidewalk. So, oh, we're going to make your life a little bit more convenient. I mean, I, I guess it's basically the same thing. So, Amazon has published a white paper detailing the technical underpinnings and service terms that it says will protect the privacy and security of this bold undertaking. To be fair, the paper is fairly comprehensive, and so far no one has pointed out specific flaws that undermine the encryption or other safeguards being put in place. But there are enough theoretical risks to give users pause. Of course there are, because hackers, um, you know, I have a friend who now works at Apple, and for this reason, I'm clearly not going to say who it is. Who, in growing up, he said that he wanted to be a hacker, not a programmer, because hackers were smarter than programmers, because hackers broke systems, programmers built them, and hackers could always tear down a system. Now, he doesn't do hacking anymore. I just want to point that out. If anyone ever puts the connection together, he never does it anymore. And he was 12 when he said this. So please don't take something that he said 20 years ago, maybe more than 20 years ago that seriously but there is some underlying truth to this i mean amazon has now effectively opened your home your broadband to hackers and they will find a way to hack you it's only a matter of time i mean heck echoes have already been hacked the fire tablets have been hacked from a distance this is going to cause so much problems once the hackers figure out how to hack this so Wireless technologies like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth have a history of being insecure. 
Remember WEP, the encryption scheme that protected Wi-Fi traffic from being monitored by nearby parties. It was widely used for four years before researchers exposed flaws that made decrypting data relatively easy for attackers. WPA, the technology that replaced WEP, is much more robust, but it also has a checkered history. Bluetooth has had its share of similar vulnerabilities over the years too, either in the Bluetooth standard or in the way it's implemented in various products. If industry standard wireless technologies have such a track record, and I'm going to highlight this uh, for those of you who can actually see and for those who can't, why are we to believe a proprietary wireless scheme will have one that's any better? I agree. Why would we assume that and let me make this a little no th never mind let's go back to that uh why would we assume that amazon's proprietary system will be any better i mean they're basically doing their own setup and again they're opening this up to people walking on the streets now amazon phone is no longer a thing i, I don't know if it ever was a thing to begin with but can you imagine if they had launched this in a situation where people could walk by with their Amazon phones and just use your bandwidth because their bandwidth kind of sucked? I mean, it's just, I don't know what we're supposed to, actually, here's where I'm actually a little bit more concerned. Here's where I'm just, uh, just a little bit more concerned. What about hotels and motels and condos and timeshares these companies use amazon products in some of these locations they say hey come in everything's amazon powered i mean now what happens if you bring your own amazon devices to one of these places you connect it up to their wi-fi internet and then before you know it everyone with their little alexas and echoes and their dots and all these guys. Now they're all talking to each other and you don't even know it. Like how on earth is this not a scary thought to people? Let's, uh, let's continue a little bit more. It, it doesn't, it doesn't get a whole lot better. I'm sorry to say the omnipotent juggernaut next consider the wealth of intimate details. Amazon devices are privy to. They see who knocks on our doors, and in some homes, they peer into our living rooms. They hear the conversations we're having with friends and family. They control locks and other security systems in our home. Extending the reach of all this encrypted data to the sidewalk and living rooms of neighbors requires a level of confidence that's not warranted for technology that's never seen widespread testing. Yeah, keep in mind, this is an experiment. This has not been tested. You are the experiment. They're going to test out to make sure this works on your devices. And if it doesn't work, well, you're the ones who are going to pay for this, not Amazon. Last, let's not forget who's providing this new way for everyone to share and share alike. As independent privacy concern, privacy researcher Ashkan Sultani puts it, in addition to capturing everyone's shopping habits from Amazon.com and their internet activity, as Amazon Web Services is one of the most dominant web hosting services, so much so I want to add that half the internet went down one day just because they had a problem. Now they are also effectively becoming a global ISP with a flick of a switch, all without even having to lay a single foot of fiber. Wow. That's a kind of power that is almost unthinkable. It really does sound like a comic book. Like, again, I've been joking about that Jeff Bezos is Lex Luthor for years at this point. He literally is. He just found a way to expand his surveillance on millions of, Ameri uh, millions of Americans with the flick of a switch. And they don't even know it. They probably won't know this. This, out of all my videos, I, I, very, I always say share my videos and all that jazz. But if there's ever a time to share a video and to give it to as many friends as possible, this would definitely be the one because this is by far the most terrifying. Anyway, 
We're almost at the end of this one. Amazon's decision to make Sidewalk an opt-out service rather than an opt-in one is also telling. The company knows the only chance of the service gaining critical mass is to turn it on by default. So that's what it's doing. Fortunately, turning off Sidewalk is a relatively painless affair. It involves, one, opening the Alexa app, which I do not have because I don't have Amazon devices except for Tile and Kindle, apparently. Two, opening more and selecting settings. Three, select account settings. Four, selecting Amazon Sidewalk. Five, turning Amazon Sidewalk off. No doubt, the benefits of Sidewalk for some people will outweigh the risks. But for the many, if not the vast majority of users, there's little upside and plenty of downside. Amazon representatives didn't respond to requests for comment. And yeah, you know, here's the thing, folks. Um, if uh, Here's the thing. If, and this is like a thought process, it's not what's actually going on. Let's just say I own this house. I don't own this house. I rent this house. But, you know, if I own this house, what if I own this house? And on the house to the right, I decide to move my parents in. And then my brother decides, hey, he wants to live in sunny L.A. too. So he moves into the house on the left. And then across the street, our neighbors from Sacramento, hey, they want some sunny weather too. They want to retire with the Hollywood luxury. So they come out too. And in those, in let's say that circumstance, okay, we turn on Amazon Sidewalk, and now we're all sharing each other's bandwidth so that if one of us goes down, they can leech off someone else. You know what? Hey, in that scenario, maybe this is neat. Maybe this is absolutely neat. I don't know anyone who's in that scenario. I don't know of anyone who could potentially even be in that scenario except super wealthy people who can afford to buy a block of homes and just move all um, of their friends in. Otherwise, I don't know who would actually be in that situation. As it stands now, I have neighbors. I have good neighbors for the most part. Actually, some of my neighbors think it's pretty cool that I do this. Um, you know, but I also don't know all my neighbors. And I mean, granted, I'm not part of the experiment because I don't own Amazon products. But that said, what if I did? I'm sharing bandwidth with my neighbors. Amazon didn't ask me if I wanted to share my bandwidth with the neighbors. The Amazon did not ask me if I wanted to let them borrow bandwidth. That might also potentially give them insights to things I'm doing on the internet and things I'm doing over the internet that they should not know about. Nothing illegal, by the way. <laughs> I want to stress that. But again, I have a remote work job that deals with, well, sensitive information of the financial sort. And that's where we're going to leave it. But, you know, because I'm sending forms with things like social security numbers, driver's licenses, bank routing information over the internet, and now all of a sudden my neighbors are borrowing bandwidth. What if one of the sons of my neighbors is a hacker? Like, and he somehow manages to hack this thing. All of a sudden he has a lot of people's very sensitive information that he just, um, if, if, you just if he just wants it. So uh, now Starry RZ says, my question is if you have this enabled and you are playing a high Pro poll game like Fortnite, will you get prioritized for the bandwidth or someone next to you? I don't know. I don't play Fortnite, to be honest. I'm playing Octopath Travelers a lot these days. And when I'm with my wife, Final Fantasy 13, too. Um, the online game that I like to play is Fancy Star Online, too. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that one's probably not that important. I'm, I know people take their games very seriously. I'm not saying you shouldn't take your game seriously, but I think in the grand scheme of things, there are more important things that you should probably be worried about. I mean, it's just, yeah. So it's, it's scary what this is potentially. Now I'm going to share this as well, even though that article did 
um, show you how to tell you how to disable your um, your how to disable Amazon Sidewalk through your account. I want to show you the screenshots so that you can see exactly what it is. This is their instructions. It's very simple. This comes straight from the Amazon website. You can open your Alexa app. I guess that's what it looks like. Again, I don't have Alexa products, so I wouldn't know. And you can select more settings, account settings. You can turn it off. I highly, I think it goes without saying, but I, I, I so, so highly recommend you do this as soon as possible. Heck, you can do this now. Even if you're watching this live stream eh, on the phone, uh, and you have to exit it, turn it off. I highly recommend you turn it off now. Amazon did not ask permission to do this. They they didn't. They they absolutely did not. Like, look, again, this is what it looks like. So you can just see it right there. But Amazon didn't ask you, you know, if they could do this. They didn't seek out your permission. They didn't tell you they were going to do this. They just did it. And it's going to happen in about 10 days. Obviously, I think it's wrong. Obviously, I'm very concerned about this. And, you know, the sad, uh, the sad thing about it is that I, I think this, if it does get out that this is what they're doing, I don't think most people are even going to do anything about it. I think people rely way too much on Amazon. You know, I was watching uh, Illuminati, um, and she did a video about Amazon. Did a couple of videos about Amazon, actually. And she laid out all the ways that this was a terrible company, and this was a controlling company, and this was an environmentally terrible company. And she said, you know, despite all this, I am probably still going to buy from Amazon. It's just too convenient. I like them too much. I've never seen a company get such a pass on so many things. And the scare, I, this is something like, you know, and this is why it's like annoying that Congress is fighting over things that do not matter. Frankly, they both seem to agree that Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, the big tech have way too much power. This is Amazon abusing their power. This is them abusing their power on a scale that we have never seen big tech abuse their power on. And I suspect a lot of people at the end of the day simply will not care. They just won't. They use Amazon products and all Amazon, all Amazon has to say is um, we're going to make your life more convenient. And that's it. They'll say, oh, well, you know, if it's going to make my life more convenient, I mean, why the heck not? I mean, we've put up with them burning books, ebooks, I should say, you know, removing books from the store that they find problematic. Uh, we're used to them recording our conversations in the kitchen and storing them, sometimes accidentally sending them to our friends. We now put cameras in them and they record what goes on in our house. And then they store that information. They store that footage somewhere. We don't know where it goes, but they're storing it. We're okay with that too. Hey, half the internet is controlled by Amazon Web Services. And it can go down when Amazon's having a bad day. I mean, Parler, I, mean, I don't like Parler, the site myself, but Amazon decides, eh, we don't want to host you. And therefore they take out a Facebook competitor just because they can. I mean, really, at, at the end of the day, um, really, when it gets down to it, why would anyone bat an eye from Amazon sharing your internet with complete strangers and without your permission? You know, this is an opt-out program, like the article said. This is an opt-in program. Um. Or wait, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, this should be an opt-in program, but it's not. It's an opt-out program. You're already going to be enrolled in it, and I don't know if you can enroll out of it now. If you can, again, I would do it right away. I would come back in two weeks, though, make sure it actually stuck, because I would really hate 
for people to log out. And then when Amazon launched the things, it's like, oh, everyone's back in. And when they get caught, it's like, oh, sorry, we made a mistake. It was a glitch. But hey, you can opt out again if you want, even though opt out should be default. So, you know, uh, it, it's just, yeah, I'm not terribly surprised. But hey, folks. Now is it time to find out what you think about this. What do you think of this information? And does it scare you? Are you going to opt out of it? I'm generally curious to know about this one. So you know the drill. Comment below. And like, favorite, share. Please share, especially if you have friends and family who have Amazon devices. Please share this information Tell them to opt out. Don't let Amazon have this kind of control over your life. And flame responsibly. So anyway, uh, since it is a live stream slash podcast, we are now going to get to the part of the show where we are going to answer some questions. I'm going to communicate with the dozen or so people who are here. Hey, I'm actually pretty happy with that. I mean, considering this is very late at night and this was done without warning and this is not typically when i do my live streams at all so let's let me go through some of these um comments because i haven't really been paying attention to them so uh so ryan yeah it's so good to see you again um he's like i'm doing good sorry for not being on your most recent stream i've been finishing up with a semester college but i'm on my summer break now so i should be able to come to all of your streams now. Oh, awesome. Well, I'm glad that you're on summer break. Uh, now, I don't know if you're still in the live stream because this was about 30 minutes ago, but if you are, um, are you going to come to Disneyland this summer? I think they're actually going to be taking away the social distancing, so you might have a chance to get in. Anyway, Uber Buck Philly says, hey, Kevin, long time since I've seen you. Yeah, well, I'm still here. Welcome. Um, I upload every week, so usually Fridays at 3 p.m. is when we do the podcast live stream with a guest, so feel free to stop by. Uh, hi, George. How are you doing? And hello, Meme Central, another Kevin. <laughs> um, Eli, you despise Amazon, LOL, but I suppose it's justified. Well, kind of like how I despise Uber, it's totally justified. Uh, do you think Doge will get to 100 when Amazon starts using it? Probably, but I don't know if Amazon wants to use it. In fact, if anything, I think Amazon's going to create their own cryptocurrency because Facebook is developing their own cryptocurrency. And this is what the big tech people want. It's not the crypto that's valuable to them. It's the data. So they will create their own coins. I think they'll be stable coins. So they, they're not really going to act like stocks. But I think these companies are going to try to create their own cryptocurrency and they're going to push for the government to make those cryptos legal and cryptos that are not backed by a company illegal because that's what big tech does. So um, let's see here. Uh, he, he, also, he also said, I don't see the need for Alexa. My phone is always on me. Plus, I truly believe Amazon spies on people. Oh, they absolutely do. And if you don't think that now... Hopefully you realize where they are later. So Ryan says, is Barnes Noble where you continue to buy most of your books from? I assume so as that's where most of the books from your autograph hound came from. Yes, I still buy the vast majority of my books from Barnes Noble. They are primarily my bookstore. Also, Book Off and Books a Million. I do buy some books from Books a Million as well. So, um... Kevin says, Amazon hosts adult websites, but they took down Parler. Shake my head. Yeah, well, look, here's the thing. I also don't want to act like I think Parler is completely innocent. They did have, um, they were not monitoring their comments very well, but the fact that they just removed the website without the option to even appeal, unlike Apple, which gave parlor did remove parlor from their store but basically said give us a game plan and you can come back on and they did and so that's what happened you know that's speaks volume so starry says i personally think the mgm buyout is giving amazon more power than this considering how many new customers 
are now under Amazon where this only affects existing Amazon customers. I don't know what you're talking about in that because MGM makes movies. Uh, M MGM does not have networks as far as I am aware. They do have Shark Tank, but I don't think there's an MGM app. I don't think they have like a service. I actually think Amazon's wildly overpaying for MGM because what are they really getting? I, I mean, they do get Shark Tank, of course, and that's like one of the number one shows on TV. They also get half of the ownership of James Bond. They don't get it completely. I guess they have the Pink Panther character. They can do something with the Pink Panther character. They have the Roaring Lion logo. They own the Crocodile Hunter movie. They now own the Crocodile Hunter movie. Um, but... I mean, it's just there to bolster their library. I don't think they're getting any new customers out of that one. So, uh, Ryan says, I'm still here. I'm currently planning on going to California in the fall if it is safer to travel then. If not, I'll most likely do a, se a semester of college in the fall and go in the spring. That's that's a good plan. Uh, thankfully, uh, I think more and more people are getting vaccinated now that we've had this vaccine for almost a year and it's uh, not killing anyone. I think most people are realizing that, uh, that yeah, this is fine. And once you get vaccinated, you can take off those masks and move on with your life. I mean, so, you know, I was going to show you, uh, I'm, I'll hold it like, yeah, you can finally get rid of these. I got to be careful how I show this because my company gave me that mask and I don't want to give out a hint to where I'm working. So, um, meme central says, I heard Andy Jassy is huge on crypto and there's a petition with over 200 K signatures for Amazon to accept Doge Doge. Um, I'm, I'm sure there is, but I don't think Amazon will accept it. I think Amazon will create their own form of stable coin and that will be the cryptocurrency that they use. Because again, when you use their coin and it doesn't matter who's getting the coin and who's using it or who's receiving it, Amazon knows where that coin is going. They get that data and it gives them more information on you, which is ultimately what's really valuable to them. Also off topic, this is what Ryan says, but have you heard that the Disney movie club has started releasing new exclusive Blu-rays? I thought that you would want to know that as a physical media fan. I am happy about that. Unfortunately, I can't really take advantage of it. I just can't. I would really like to be able to, especially since I hear that they're doing an exclusive version of the Black Cauldron, which is like right now the only, uh, like one of the only Disney animated classic films that I don't have on Blu-ray. But uh, years ago, and this is like 10 years ago, I signed up for Disney Movie Club and I did not pay my bill. And so therefore I am blacklisted from the Disney Movie Club now. I was in a much worse financial situation. My finances are so much better now, but... It's kind of like the damage is done, so I can't I can't do Disney movie clubs. I basically have to buy them on eBay. So, Starries says, this will combine with Amazon streaming and create a much less competition in the space. I don't think, no, I mean, I hate to say, you know, I, I don't like that Amazon bought MGM, but I don't see it that way because, again, MGM did not have a streaming service they just didn't they were licensing their movies to various streaming platforms like netflix and hulu so that's per you know what's going to create a little less competition um warner media merging with discovery because i can guarantee you the hbo max and discovery apps will be combined and heck the crunchy roll sale looks like it's not going to get past the regulatory approval so hey what the heck Bold crunch, crunchy roll into what I assume will be titled HBO Discovery. That's what I think the new app is going to be called. So that is definitely removing competition. But having a bunch of old movies, um, I don't know. Actually, where there's going to be less competition, it might be with physical media. Because now um, Amazon owns all these classic movies from MGM. Um like classic series, like I can see now they're going to release a ultra HD set of the Pink Panther movies by Blake Edwards and for the most part, Peter Sellers. 
and it's going to be an Amazon exclusive. Now they'll probably do like a ultra a 4K release of Fargo. Going to be an Amazon exclusive. So that's where there might be less competition. It's going to be in the physical media space. It's not going to be in the streaming wars per se. So uh, Meme Central says, I think it's a matter of time before the GVT cracks down on big tech. The GVT wants all the power and control, but right now big tech calls the shots. Well, the um, both Democrats and Republicans seem to agree that big tech is a problem. They have too much power, and this story that we talked about tonight kind of highlights why that is. Oh, um, let's see. He says, I hope you guys get me Kevin as your next governor. He seems to have phenomenal plans for your state. Would you invest in an Amazon coin if it was to come out? You might make a huge profit. Well, here's the thing. Uh, the Amazon coin would not work the way a crypto works. It wouldn't be a crypto coin. It would be a stable coin. And there's a big difference now. Some people don't know what stable coins are, and most people don't seek them out because stable coins are, by design, boring. Stable coins are, you buy a coin for a dollar, that digital coin is worth a dollar for all of eternity. Pretty boring, right? Well, it's by design, and that's why it's going to be, that's why it's a huge threat to crypto. Because obviously the government would want a stable coin as opposed to a currency that fluctuates. And who's going to make the stable coins? Well, the government's not going to make the stable coins. It's going to be Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Twitter, Google. They're the ones who are going to make the stable coins. And so, yeah, you get your stable coins from them. But then that stable coin gets used to uh, buy a good. In this case, Shenmue toy capsules, which I am selling for. For quite a bit of money on eBay if anyone wants to buy them. And let's say someone gives me 500 stable coins for these. Okay, I take the stable coins. Then I go to Newegg and I buy myself an Xbox C Series S because what the heck, I need a second Xbox. And then that coin gets passed around from place to place to place. All the while, it's collecting data. The data is getting encrypted in the stable coin and it's being shared with Amazon, Facebook, whoever creates the coin. And that's why Amazon will create a stable coin, and that is why the government will get behind a stable coin because it doesn't fluctuate. So, there you go. Uh, let's see here. Um, Ryan says, are you happy that HBO Max's first anniversary was this Thursday? Uh, I don't know why I would be happy. I mean, it's nice that it was the first year anniversary. I'm glad it's still around, but I, I don't the anniversary. I don't know. I don't celebrate the anniversaries of Netflix or Disney Plus. I don't know why I would celebrate the anniversary for HBO Max. So Starry says, if big tech starts banning more politicians from account from accounts, action will be taken. Only banning Trump was enough to trigger restrictions nationwide. Well, yeah, that's and and admittingly, they held off on banning Trump as long as they could because they knew that that would put them in a bind. And it did put them in a bind, and there's a lot of debate now on whether or not that was the right thing to do. I think a suspension was not uncalled for, but a permanent ban, especially a ban on platforms that he wasn't even using, that that was like that kind of showed the how much overreach there was. But yeah, they're uh, we're going to uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting because there's eventually going to be another politician that just says something that's going to go against these guidelines and big tech is going to suspend them. And then the debate starts all over again. How much power should they have? Uh, yes, I did say stable coins. In fact, uh, stable coins. So for those of you, like, I... This is like a real thing. I, I think some of you kind of doubt me right now. Here's a stable coin. Stable coins are cryptocurrencies where the price is designed to be pegged to a cryptocurrency fiat money or to exchange trade commodities such as precious metals or industrial metals. So the main characteristics of backed stable coins are their value is fixed to one or more commodities and redeemable for such more or less on demand. There is a promise to pay, but unregulated individuals 
agorist firms, or even regulated financial institutions. The amount of commodity used to to back the stable coin has to reflect the circulating supply of the stable coin. So there you go. It's a real thing. And that's what the future of cryptocurrency is probably going to be. Um, do you think the meet Kevin guy will be your next governor? I don't know if you're talking about me, but uh, no, I will probably not run for governor. Um, I don't think, I don't think anyone in California would elect me to be governor, um, not to to my own horn, but I think I use far too much common sense and logic to be the governor of California. So there you go. All right. Any final comments before this show comes to an end? Um, uh, no, he's a YouTuber. Oh, let me uh, let me let me look him up. His name is Meet Kevin, huh? Let's see here. Um, oh, yeah, he's uh, Kevin. Uh, oh, this guy. Um, I uh, let me let me share share this real quick. That's some problems. Kevin being such a common name. Uh, I have heard of this guy. Yeah, he's a. Uh, I actually like uh, his videos. And I think, uh, yeah, he's got some good ideas. I, I wouldn't be entirely opposed if he, he was the governor. So, uh, yeah, who knows? All right, folks, that's where we're going to end this one. So, thank you all for tuning in. Remember, we're now on Spotify. Just look, look up the Entrepreneur Show, and I will catch you all later. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. And as always, flame responsibly. Thank you for joining me on this impromptu discussion about this absolutely creepy and insane thing that Amazon is doing.